أكبر الله أكبر Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Islamic Center at New York University podcast coming to you straight from the heart of New York City. We're building an amazing Muslim community here at ICNYU where everyone is welcomed and respected no matter where you're from or where you're at. This is the place to be. So open your ears and your heart and come along with us on another life-changing journey. Bismillah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the universe, the master of the day of judgment. I bear witness and testimony to the oneness of Allah, to his magnificence, his omnipotence, his might, his glory, to his being the creator and sustainer of all things, the giver of life, the guider of hearts, the master of the day of judgment. And I bear witness to the fact that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and final messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon all those who choose to tread in his path until the last day. <clears throat> One of the questions that the Quran poses to us as a mode of reflection and contemplation within a sea of pages that invites us to engage the intellect that it has endowed us with. Allah asks us, فَأَيْنَ habun And where are you going? The question in and of itself is not meant to be one that is rhetorical, but one that has to be answered in some capacity by each one of us individually. So the moments that we sit in are not moments that are used in futility, but to be able to ascertain meaning and to think in the immediacy of this world, but also in terms of the world that exists beyond this one. May Allah make us people of Jannah. Where are you going? The nature of Ramadan is such that it is made up of many things that can quite often just be mechanical. You can acclimate yourself to an experience that replicates what it was for you a year ago or five years ago or ten years ago. That lets you be in a space where it's the same thing each and every time. And many of us know whether it's in this community or Muslim communities around the world that towards the end of the month is when people will start to think about what are you going to do beyond the month in and of itself. But when we are now in a place where we have gone through half of this month, may Allah accept it from us. And we inshallah ta'ala still have, God willing, a still half of a month ahead of us. May Allah allow for us to reach its end and take benefit from it. If you haven't already, you want to now pose this question to yourself, فَأَيْنَ habun? Where are you going? The broader sense of our journey is not meant to be something that is limited to materialistic understandings. The dunya in and of itself is not secular in the sense that God is not present in certain ways, the way that we might think about it. But the secularity of this world is something that when you walk around in its streets, its secularism teaches you and breeds a notion that there's nothing else beyond this. It speaks about something in terms of absolute finiteness, telling you to waste the best of your energy in pursuit of things that you're going to leave behind anyway, to understand and channel something that is deeper than just worldly success. That doesn't mean you have to live in denial of any sense of achievement in this world, but it can't be the only thing that you're thinking about. habun, rooted in an idea that there is something that is much bigger. And you start to introspect about what lies ahead in relation to what it was that came before all of this to begin with. 
My kids and I were driving here, and I asked them, what do you think I should talk about in Juma today? And in the course of the conversation, I said to them, how has it been going for you this Ramadan? My son Kareem, right here. My daughter Medina, well, I hope she's here. My wife will punch me in the face. I posed this question and I said, first, Kareem, how has Ramadan been for you? And he said, Baba, you know, it's not been my best Ramadan so far. And I said, you're seven, man. <laughs> He said, I've had seven years of Ramadan so far, Baba. And then Medina, she said, do you remember all of those Ramadans? And he said, last year, that was a good year. And to understand where it was that he was coming from, that the poor guy, he had sickness this Ramadan, and he was trying to fast, fasted day one, and then got ill, and now is, mashallah, trying to fast again on his own accord. The recognition, though, of this reality that when I can pose to my child and then I ask my daughter, how is it going for you? And they can sit and they can reflect and they can contemplate. And the little things make a bigger difference that we can draw meaning from. As we are in an Uber coming here and the window is slightly cracked and we are blocks away from all kinds of things. My daughter sniffs the air and she says, Baba, I can smell Shake Shack from here. <laughs> She says, isn't it strange that when you're fasting, you can smell better? I said, no, baby. It's not just that you smell better, but the whole point of fasting is that it heightens awareness. The things that you become blind to in the course of your daily routines, you now are able to engage all of your sensory perception because it's not about an empty stomach, it's about a full heart. And you can be sitting in a car blocks away from something and you still now are smelling what you normally smelled, but the ability to have consciousness and recognition is in your disposal. Why would you go back to a place of mindlessness? Why would you willfully choose to go back to a place where the heart is not awake? When you can sit and you can reflect upon each and everything that brings you to this place and not undermine it. The notion that is embedded in the idea that the recital of the Quran that is either coming from your own tongue or you are hearing it being recited by others. The idea that you are breaking fast now either in communion with other people or even if you're doing it on your own it's still at the end of the day where you have not deprived your stomach but shifting the paradigm you are nourishing your soul when you can understand that the charity that you give the volunteerism that you're in all of these things they bring you to this place where some things that you never noticed before that were so beautiful they're all there for you the poems that describe the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in likeness to the moon or a rose, they're not going to hit as hard as they can if you've never actually stopped to look at the moon or to smell a rose. You're not going to be able to have verses of the Qur'an resonate deeply that speak to you about the alterations of the sun and the moon, the night and the day, telling you to think about the rains and how it brings life to this dead earth again and again and again. If you don't spend time just in looking at the things that are around you, but not seeing it from these eyes, seeing it from a vision of your heart, real basira, man. Where are you going to go at the end of this? What is it going to look like for you a week after Ramadan that you are in the month of Shawwal? What is it going to look for you when you come upon, inshallah ta'ala, another Rajab and another Shaban in anticipation of the coming month of Ramadan? What will it look like for you in specific? What are you going to let go of? One of the worst self-talk statements that Muslims make across the board, generalization I'm comfortable making, is when the month is done, they say, that was just because it was Ramadan. We have everybody move forward. You come in, make room. Amira told me to do that. And if you're upset, you can get mad at her. And she's super pregnant, so don't be mad at her pregnant lady. <laughs> 
That was only because of Ramadan. You've said it likely or you've heard someone else say it. Man, I wish it was Ramadan. Yeah, the month is different. But the statement in of itself is one where you are degrading yourself when you say that. That you believe that the capacity and potential that you are being made aware of through the auspicious month that you are situated in somehow does not take into account you and what you are capable of doing. The idea would be such that if somebody said, I lost weight because only I was dieting, but yeah, that's the whole point of it. It brings you as a cause to a certain result. So you have a set of causation within this month that is now yielding results. Don't change what it is that you are saying, but celebrate the idea that the madrasa that is Ramadan is giving you an insight into where you're at. A lot of people say it's the middle of the month, people hit a slump, that's fine. There's still benefit in you learning your capacity and your boundaries. To be able to understand what your limitations are and how things affect you. The notion that you are not meant to be in pursuit of perfection. This is a futile pursuit, but you are able to recognize and embrace the love of the divine because he loves you for who he is, not who you are and takes you in with all of your diversity and every imperfection that you might perceive yourself to have because that's what perfect love does. Look at the grotesqueness of the dunya. Look at what it is that humanity is capable of when they go unchecked and they don't think about what it is that they're actually going to be headed towards. Think about the realities that somebody could go and ransack a house of worship in the middle of the night of a population that already lives under occupation. Cameras rolling. The world is still seeing what's going on. And they're going to do it again next Ramadan, probably. May Allah bring ease to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. People don't think about what's ahead. <coughs> People don't think about where they're really going. You think about it for your own self. You think about what it means to be endowed with a capacity as a human living in this world, distinct from the rest of creation. You have decisions that you decide upon consciously or unconsciously, choices that you will make, choose with beauty, choose through your heart, not at its expense. Where am I going? My mom FaceTimed me on the way to Jummah today. And we gave salams and she then said to me in Urdu, Khalid Tiko, Khalid, are you doing okay? This is my mother. Mothers are different from everybody else. So I can't lie to my mom because she knows me better than me. And she can see on my face, even if it's through a mini computer sitting in my pocket, that there's something that is causing my heart to ache. It's not easy to see the heaviness of this world. It's not. It's not easy when you try to make sense of just where and how people go through what it is that they go through, why this is the case. And when I sit and kind of stir in my sleep, my thoughts running through my head. One of the things that is most prevalent is not with an air of trepidation or anxiety, but I think and reflect some time in this broader frame of where am I going? As to why did God put me here of all places? Why was I given this the blessing and benefit of good people like you. Why is it simply my choice whether I will choose to pray my prayer or not? Nobody is going to ever run through the doors with guns and rifles pointed at my head and zip tie my arms up. Why do I not have to ever wonder if at the time of sunset I will have food for iftar? What is it that my Lord wants from me? 
that he gave me the spiritual gifts that he gave me and he gave me the talents that he gave me and he gave me the community that he gave me and he gave me all of these things. As my mother asked me, are you doing okay? I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. I'm just still trying to figure out what it is that I'm supposed to be doing as I go forward. And am I actually doing what it is that Allah wants me to do with everything that He has blessed me with? So when I stand in front of Him, I can say that, Ya Rabbi, I fulfilled that purpose. Many of us in this room are not now the youngest people that were in this community when it first started. Some of us are elders and we benefited from this space at a time when there wasn't so many of us. When you walk into this room, you have to understand now it's time for you to give back to those who are younger. And if you only come because you are looking for people that are familiar to you, then you are not doing justice and honoring what was given to you. I say it with love. And if you are in a place where you're new to this space, you have to understand that this is a place that many people sacrifice for. Not me. It was started in 1978. You might not believe it, but I wasn't alive then. <laughs> and they didn't go through what it was that they went through so that we would come here and be people, that we find something that heals our hearts, but then we don't do things with that healed heart that it is now upon our shoulders to continue to build in their legacies. Where are you going? Where are we going to go as a community, as a center? What are we going to build together going forward? What are we going to do as a collective that we can't do individually? But with wakeful hearts, each one of us now rendered to a place of consciousness that only a reality like Ramadan can allow for us to reach. We celebrate the idea that we are now not in a place of individuality, but with each one with a wakeful heart, a community filled with hearts that are awake can go out and be a catalyst of real good and beauty in this world that is sorely in need of it. But as you go into this latter part of the month, you start to ask yourself this question. My babies, my son, my daughter, wherever she is, I said, what do you think I should tell people? They said, tell them to use the rest of Ramadan to do good things. And language is really important. Because when the imperative is to go out and do good, it also assumes that you should not be going out and doing bad. Don't use these coming days to validate anger that is not justifiable. Unleashing all kinds of things that are within you against those who are nearest and dearest to your heart. Live with gentleness, kindness, compassion. Treat each breath as if it is something that has meaning to it because we don't know how many of them we have left in this dunya. Be in a place where if the opportunity comes for you to be in service of anything in God's creation, whether they share faith with you or not, culture with you or not, race, ethnicity, class with you or not, anybody that's there, even if it's not a human, you have traditions that teach you that those who would give water to thirsty beasts were given Jannah for those acts of mercy. But utilize the rest of the month in the ways that it was intended to. And you can't just think about that in a frame that then has you live in what's not capable or possible. Because everybody's job is not going to allow for them to go to the masjid five times a day. Everybody's home life is not going to allow for them to be able to stand into the middle of the nights. One thing that you want to think about is that if you don't have those restrictions on you, then you have to, for love of your brother and sister, stand into the middle of the nights for the sake of those who cannot do it. Even if they want to do it, they simply are not able to do it because of life circumstances. You can go and look right now in the streets of old Jerusalem. There are people who are praying outside of the gates of the Aqsa compound because they're not letting them into the masjid. They're fudger prayer. May Allah make us a generation that sees a free Palestine in our life. 
for the sake of those people who would do anything and everything, even move in a direction where their physical bodies are going to be tortured by those who seek to do nothing other than elevate themselves in ugliness by denigrating others. You tap into a love and you say that I am going to get up and pray my Fajr prayer for no other reason because there are those who yearn to do it and what is keeping them from doing it is not anything that is their fault or doing. You think about whatever these days will be littered with and how you can adapt within the course of your own routine. And just think about what does all of this mean at the end of the day? That when I'm standing in front of my Creator individually, what is it that my book will say? How will these days be utilized? Will I be able to say that I made use of them and took from them everything that I had full capacity to take from? Fa'ina tadhabun, where are you going? Just reflect upon it in these days while you still can. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدل الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا مولانا محمدا عبده ورسول أهدفس لاي arguably the most blessed nights in the calendar year, the last ten nights of Ramadan. The many are of the opinion that within those nights there is one night that worship in it is considered to be more precious than a thousand months worth of worship. May Allah make us from those who seek it, witness it, and benefit from it. Start to plan and anticipate how it is that those days and nights would look for you. What is it that you are going to be engaged in? What is it that you are going to be in pursuit of? For those of you who have the capacity to engage in the prophetic practice that is called the itikaf, the seclusion to the masjid, if you can do the entire 10 days of the last third of Ramadan, then do it. And if you can't do all, then take a portion of those days and nights to do what it is that you can. And as you prep, prep with an understanding that your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual spheres make you who you are in your entirety. You're going to be in gatherings, man, that everybody is welcome to come in. How you are accepted in these nights is not the way that the world seeks to accept you based off of frivolous metrics low, shallow understandings of what beauty actually are. When you stand titles and degrees, these things will all be stripped away. And the only thing that you stand with is really the presence of your heart. And may Allah grant us hearts that are attentive and wakeful, ready to be softened and malleable in these nights. And beyond those nights, fa'ina tadhabun. I want you to think about what the day of Eid is going to look like for you. How it is that you are going to hasten to give your zakah, your sadaqah, in particular the zakat al-fitr, so that those who don't have means can also celebrate the holiday. We'll send out notices as to where you can offer this in the coming days. But it's a day of celebration of everything you achieved in this month of Ramadan. So celebrate it to its fullest. Think about gifts that you are going to give to loved ones. Think about new members of our community 
Literally, his sister just took her shahada, and right after this is done, two more people are going to take their shahada. Which one of you is going to be in a place that you are going to extend greetings of Eid, not just in a mechanical way, but in a way that understands there's a lot of people in this room that they're the only Muslim in their family. Think about it with wakefulness. What is it going to look like? And then every tomorrow that you are in this world, let it be a day that you start with an understanding that here now is another opportunity for me to demonstrate what it is that's really important, what it is that's of real value. Let not any of those days end without you bringing benefit to yourself and benefit to the people that are around you. Inshallah ta'ala, Allah Azza wa will make us from amongst those who benefit from this month of Ramadan and make us from amongst those who leave it in a state that is better than which we had entered it and allow for us to carry forth on its lessons every day that we are in this world, making it a means of benefit for us in the world beyond this one. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad Fil awaleen wa fil akhirin Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam Ya arhamal rahimin Allahumma inna ka'afuan kareemu tuhibu al-afwa fa'afu'anna Ya mukalib al-kulub thabbit kulubana ala dinik Allahumma ja'alna min al-mukhlisin اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين اللهم جعلنا من المخلصين We begin this supplication in your name Ya Allah We beseech you to send your choices salutations upon your most beloved Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam we ask that you shower your infinite mercy upon this gathering, granting each and every one who is present here in and our loved ones only the best in this world and the best in the next. We ask, Ya Allah, that if all of us are meant to be together only at this time, at this place, whether we are young or old, male or female, regardless of our race, our ethnicity, our social class, our country of origin, our cultural heritage, whether we are Muslim or come from a different walk of life, Ya Rabbi, if our individual hearts are meant to be in the presence of all of their hearts that are gathered here, only at this time, at this place, then gather us all together again in the best of places in the world beyond this one. Help us, Ya Allah, to take from these remaining days and nights of Ramadan all that we are able to. Accept from us every dua that we have invoked you by, Ya Rabbi. Put khair into it and give to us even better than what it is that we are asking of. Make us those, Ya Allah, who are given strength to stand into the nights for ourselves as well as for the sake of our loved ones, to remember those that the world have forgotten, and help not any one of us ever feel as if we are not remembered by any of your creation. There are so many, Ya Rabbi, who are going through circumstances of pain and difficulty. Make us the reason that people have hope in this world and never the reason that people might dread it. For all those, Ya Allah, who are longing for companionship, looking for their life partners, their spouses in this world, who will be with them in the best of places in the world beyond this one, bring ease to their hearts, Ya Rabb. Remove the impediments and obstacles that make it difficult for them to find those partners. And help them to be blessed with the gift of a life companion that is good for them in this world and in the next. There are so many, Ya Rabbi, who have a longing to have the blessing of children in their life. Bring to them ease, Ya Allah, and give them children that will be a coolness to their eyes. And make them guardians, parents, who will honor the rights of their children always. There are those, Ya Allah, who find themselves in financial difficulty and constraints and hardship. Facing food insecurity, homelessness, absence to just any type of health care whatsoever. There are those, Ya Rabb, who whether the sun is shining or the rain is falling, they call the streets and subway platforms of this city their home. Those, Ya Rabbi, who have not seen a shower for weeks and months. Those who have not tasted good warm food for so long. Make us, Ya Allah, the means through which you give shelter to your creation. Make us, Ya Rabbi, this community, the means through which you provide food to your creation. 
Help this space, Ya Rab, and every person that is here to be conscious and cognizant of the role that we play. To be elevated, to be a means to which you bring hope, generosity, mercy, and love to your creation. For all those who find themselves in a place of conflict at this time, Ya Allah, those who are incarcerated, refugees, people who are being pushed out of their homelands, those who live in this city who are dealing with the realities of gentrification, generations of black and brown families that are now being pushed out of their neighborhoods, those who find themselves living just in the reality of constant war. Ya Salaam, we turn to you to send your peace upon this world and help us to be from amongst those who bring peace to it. Give us the healing that we long for, Ya Rabb, so that we can be a source of healing for your creation. Help us to be filled with love, life, and light so that we can live our days in this world in the ways that you have intended for us to do. And where we meet with you on that day of reckoning, that day of resurrection, let it be a day that is filled with ease, a day that we meet you and your mercy, a day that we are not taken into account in any way, but are just given entrance into your paradise without any judgment. Make the best of our deeds the last of our deeds in this world, Ya Rabb, and let not any one of us leave this place other than in a state that is most pleasing to you. For our students, Ya Allah, who are seeking to balance their days in the midst of exams, papers, and so much more. Put barakah into their studies and efforts. And thank you, Ya Allah, for a space that they allow for us at this university to share with them. Make us from the best of their supporters always and good examples of what real Muslims should be. Protect us always from hearts that are not humble, tongues that are not wise, and eyes that have forgotten how to cry. Forgive us for our shortcomings and guide and bless us all. Rabbana taqabbal minna, inna ka anta samiul alim. Wutub alina ya maulana, inna ka anta tawab rahim Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khari khalkihi muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Bi rahmatika ya arhamu rahimeen. Wa akimu salaam. We hope you enjoyed our podcast. If you're inspired by the work that we're doing at the IC and want to help keep it going, subscribe to our podcasts, follow us on social media, donate to help support us at icnyu.org, and most importantly, keep us in your continued du'as. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>